because I think the desire is that we become one, joined to him and one spirit with him. And then when you do that, it's, it is sometimes difficult to, well, who, who decided to do that? Was that me being moved? Was that me making the decision? Was that me just like Jesus, only doing what I feel and sense the Father's heart is, which is more of a frequency? It's not necessarily words or instruction, but a heart and a desire. And I think the more we spend time engaged face to face, heart to heart, the more we resonate with that frequency, even if we don't know what it is. You know, when I was Im immature in these things, I was asking what his instructions were every day. I wanted to know his instructions. What is my mandate? What do you want me to do? Because I was insecure in a sense of having that intimacy, which I could in a, be comfortable with knowing that I knew the father's heart. So I wanted instructions. And I think we, that's why children need instructions. They need help in making decisions and doing things. And we need to teach them to that. And sometimes we'll make decisions on their behalf because we love them. Now, when they start to get older, you have to begin to give them more leeway so they can learn to make those decisions themselves. And I think God uh, does that with us, but he also wants us to be in a place where we know his heart and we make decisions out of the knowledge of his heart. And even if we don't always get those decisions or things 100% right, he's looking at the heart not just looking at what we did. So motive is as important as action. And I think he gives us the leeway to learn. We won't get it 100% right all the time because sometimes we will be distracted by the frequencies of the things around us. And when we're distracted, we tend to sink. That's what happened to Peter. You could say he was following the frequency of step out of the boat. This is the father's desire. This is Jesus desire for you. And then all of a sudden the wind and the rain and the storm created a frequency that interfered with his signal, if you like. And it's like, Oh no. And he started to panic because he lost touch with that, which was in effect, keeping him on the right path of walking across the water. Cause eventually if he carried on, he would have walked to Jesus and everything would have been good. But obviously he got distracted. Now, sometimes we do get distracted by the storms of life, by things that happen. And in those moments of distraction, sometimes the frequencies that are actually around us in the world can appear to be stronger than the internal frequencies that are guiding us from our relationship with the Father. And I think that would be normal for everybody. But the more those internal frequencies, those connections with the Father's heart, being connected with where we're seated in heavenly places, the more we mature in that, the less likely it is that the things around us will overwhelm us because we'll be stronger and the frequency will be stronger. Our connection will be stronger. We will know it at a deeper level. And it won't be shaken by things that seem to contradict it or go against it from a, an earthly perspective. So I think generally, I think that's how Jesus lived every day. Now, there were special occasions where it says he went either early in the morning or all night. And he spent time in the presence of the father because there were important things that needed to be done. And I think in those moments, he wanted to ensure that the frequency of the father's heart was very clear to him because he also was human as well as being God. And he was subject to all sorts of stuff. He did get hungry in the wilderness. Otherwise, there would be no point in tempting him with bread. You know, so they, they had, he had human emotions and human experiences that, you know, like in the garden, when he was facing the cross, there were you know, experiences that he was going through. And so I think at times he definitely upped his game, if you like, and 
sought the father's heart more specifically about something or you know choosing the disciples i think that was one that it says he spent time with the father you know and even then he still chose judas you know so it, did he get it wrong no <laughs> because he didn't get it wrong because effectively judas that was his role you know so yeah i, I think uh, learning to discern the frequency of the father's heart and following it and allowing that to really guide us and direct us is definitely something which is should be you know high in our agenda and learning to to know the father's heart by spending time with the father will help us when it comes to making decisions doing things and you know as i said before he gives us a lot of creative leeway because he wants us to learn to be creative not just follow a set of detailed instructions you know if you were working in a car plant and you were responsible for painting the cars years ago i know now it's all robotic and all done automatically you know they wouldn't have been very impressed if you painted one green when it should have been red or if you got very creative one day and painted it with all the stripes of the rainbow they would have fired you for contra you know, demanding what they wanted you to do but with god he's not so much interested in the minute detail of what color it is he's more interested in the bigger picture and therefore he gives us a lot of creative leeway within how we do things to do them the way it outworks through us as a child of god made in his image you know and but i think frequency of his heart can keep us on track yeah, so we don't wildly go off track and follow you know, our own path you know, out of whatever reason, whether it be fear or any other thing. You know, it's like a home in beacon that keeps us you know, walking in the right direction, you know, uh, which I think we can learn to tune into uh, and it becomes stronger. Hi, everyone. We're starting a Patreon page, patreon.com slash freedom arc and we would like to invite you to partner with us in taking the message of god's unconditional love limitless grace triumphant mercy to a bigger global audience 